No beating around the bush in this intro. In this video, I'll share my current EDC, the everyday carry items I <laughs> carry every day. Welcome to Get It Together, and if you're new here, this channel is just me trying to figure out how to get my life together and sharing the tips and lessons I learned along the way. Before kicking off, there are indeed timestamps in the description below, so feel free to hop around as you see fit. Especially for those of you who kind of don't really care about the context of each piece, but just want to know the individual specific items in my EDC. My EDC falls into two main buckets, my on-person carry and my in-car kit. I'm very fortunate to have a car and that enables me to have a few just in cases that I wouldn't otherwise have on my person just to reduce bulk. Let's kick things off with my on-person carry. First things first, apartment keys. Obviously the most important since I can forget everything else, but if I don't have these, I ain't getting back into the apartment to get the things that I forgot. For the keyring itself though, it's called the Spec DNT and it was a super fast seven day Kickstarter campaign me and my buddy Eric did last year. Its intended use is to open doors, press buttons, hang onto bus poles without actually gripping them. But I'm gonna be really completely honest, although I do use it for all of those things, at least half the time, I use it as just a finger spinning toy. By the way, if you might be interested in one, let me know in the comments below and hell, while we're at it, let's just do a subscriber giveaway in this video as well and there's gonna be details a little bit later. Continuing on with my keys, my car keys are anchored to a small flashlight, the Thru-Night BSSW1. That comes in handy all the time, but they're on my car keys because I tend to drop things way more often than I like to admit between my driver's seat and the center console, so it's helpful to be able to take a peek in there. But I love this flashlight because even though the output isn't insane, capping out just shy of 700 lumens, it's tiny, it's USB rechargeable, it's got a magnetic end, so if I gotta take a look under the hood at night, I can just magnetically anchor it to the bottom of the hood. And lastly, because it actually has a respectably stiff two-sided clip. On the one hand, I can clip it to my belt loop or outer pocket if I have too much other random stuff inside my pocket. But best of yet, I can affix it to the brim of my baseball cap for hands-free use if, say, I need to swap a flat tire at night. Sort of an improvised headlamp without needing a headband integrated torch. My car keys and the through night are anchored together with a night eyes S beaner for easy removal of the flashlight if I gotta use it while the key's in the ignition or like I just showed, dump it onto my baseball cap without a kind of the car keys hitting my face. By the way, I keep my car keys separate since I don't necessarily drive every time I go out and more importantly, I don't want a single point of failure where if I lose one, I lose both. A similar philosophy is the same reason why I don't have one of those phone cases that doubles as a wallet, since again, if I lose one, they're both gone. Speaking of phones and phone cases, I'm due for an upgrade since at this point, the battery is hot trash, but for the next kind of common component that is in everyone's EDC, I'm rocking an original 2016 Apple iPhone SE in a camel leather case, also from Apple. And since I communicate primarily with phone calls and not texts, AirPods Pros are my earbuds of choice. Not much more to say about the phone. When it comes to my wallet, I've been using Herschel wallets for over a decade. I like to keep my pocket bulk to a minimum, so I've always opted for their slim wallets. When cash was still a common mode of payment for me, I used this Herschel brown leather Raven wallet that had a money clip on one side. But for the past few years, I've moved over to the Herschel Charlie slim wallet in brown suede. It comfortably stores my two credit cards and two debit cards on the outside slots and my driver's license, health card, Costco membership, and work ID in the center slot, along with some cash. You know, one of those just in case things. I love that I can comfortably store eight cards and some emergency cash all in this tiny slim profile. Regardless though, this has been my wallet for over six years and there's no signs of failure at all. All the seams are still strong and intact and it truly hits all of my personal wallet needs. Next up, pocket knife, a vital part of a comprehensive EDC. It's for cutting threads, opening envelopes and packages, cutting up food on the go, slicing gaff tape when I'm filming, processing cardboard. If you're an idiot like me, and please don't be, using it as the occasional pry tool or makeshift screwdriver. I use my knife multiple times daily. My daily blade is the Benchmade Model 537GY1. It checks all the boxes for me. I just love how lightweight it is while still inspiring a ton of confidence in its overall durability with the woodland green anodized aluminum handle scales. I've always been a fan of Tonto blades and again, please do not be an idiot like I am, but the Tonto shape lends itself well to prying applications with more surface area and much less fear of snapping a delicate point on say something like my Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight. 
Speaking of delicacy, the blade steel is the opposite of delicate. This is my first blade made of M4 steel, and both the edge retention and sheer toughness of the steel is incredible. I mean, it's probably why I feel so confident prying with it. I only accept a deep carry pocket clip for all of my EDC knives, and this knife comes with a Benchmade mini deep carry clip installed, so it's as secured inside my pocket as possible, while still enabling ease of access. Although I thankfully never had to use it, the included glass breaker is a bonus touch, and the access lock combined with the magnetic feeling retract ranks high on my satisfying fidget factor scale. <laughs> and just to be clear, it's not magnetic, it just feels that way when you retract it. My only complaint, I'd personally like to see some more aggressive jimping here for better grip on more forceful tasks. But this, of course, is entirely subjective. I know folks who hate aggressive jimping, but honestly, this is basically my perfect EDC blade. Premium enough that I wanna take care of it, robust enough that I don't have to baby it, and most importantly, easily handles every actual task that I personally use and throw at it. After all, what good is a tool if you don't use it? Before talking watches, let's move to the part of my EDC that is likely not as common for most, and that'd be my beloved notebook and pens. I never leave home without them. But more importantly, they're kind of the number one most vital part of my everyday use items. I may not leave my home every day, so my wallet, keys, and other essentials may stay in their home. But whether it's my bed, desk, toilet, or kitchen, where I go, these go. I used to be a Field Notes brand guy, by the way, but maybe it's because of the ways I use my notebook and the main three page execution types I run through pretty much every day. But Field Notes are just a bit too small per page. The trade off, of course, is that now I gotta carry a slightly bigger notebook. But for the past three years, I've been using notebooks by Traveler's Company based out of Japan. They're just awesome. I mean, the leather covers look great to me, and they have inserts for every possible use case you might have. Sticky notes, zippered folders, business card organizers, and of course, various notebook types. Best of all, you can easily daisy chain up to five inserts in the covers. So for example, you may have a graph paper notebook, a ruled notebook, a plain sketching notebook, a wallet insert, a sticky note bank, all neatly accessible and securely anchored inside the leather cover. Me, I just need my one blank page notebook and zipper folio insert. You can also anchor charms made by Traveler's Company, and as an avid traveler myself, I've opted for this little airplane one. By the way, if you are interested in exactly how I use my notebook so frequently to help increase my productivity and clarity, please do let me know in the comments if you'd like a video breaking my notebook and productivity process down. As for pens, for only just the past few months, so honestly I'm quite new to it all, I've started using fountain pens, and since I'm so new, I've opted to go with a pretty ubiquitous entry-level pen called the Safari by a German brand, Lamy. Because I do quite a lot of flowcharts and process maps and stuff as a core part of my brainstorming, I've always carried two pens with two different colored inks, and now, beyond just two different colored inks, one is a medium-sized nib and one is an extra fine-sized nib. The next item in my EDC kit is from my most recent Kickstarter campaign. It's this, Queen P. It's a chess pawn promotion queen that doubles as a small secret container, and in it, I store a spare Lamy ink cartridge in case I ever run out when I'm on the go. As for my EDC watch, it's primarily my Seiko SKX007 dive watch, which I did an extremely minimal mod to by swapping out the dive timer's bezel insert to a dual time bezel insert. Since I like keeping track of my home time zone when I'm traveling, in case kind of I have cross time zone phone calls scheduled or whatever. You may have noticed also that I have sort of a theme with my current EDC kit, which is mostly earth tones of greens and shades of browns. So I dumped this green NATO strap on the SKX as it's durable, easy to wash, lightweight, and matches pretty damn well, I must say, with my knife, flashlight, and fountain pen. I wear this watch 75% of the time and 20% of the time if I'm, say, going to the beach, camping, or doing anything a little bit more extreme, I swap it out for this right here, the G-Shock Rangeman, model GW9400-3. The final 5% of the times when it comes to watches, I'll swap it out if I'm going to a dressier occasion where a dive watch or digital tool watch just really aren't appropriate. Before going to the three items that are always in my car, everything so far is part of my on-person EDC, and for much of it, goes inside of this Peak Design 3-liter camera sling. I quite like the Peak Design ecosystem and especially love this capture camera mount, so I can just slot my camera in for quick access with zero worries of it falling out. I don't use it often, but it's just so low profile that it just stays on here permanently. I must say though that I'm actively currently seeking something that's less bulky, so if you have any recommendations on a sling or a hip pack you swear by, I'd love to know in the comments below. 
After all, this is designed to be protective of camera gear, and since what I actually put in it on a daily basis when I head out, namely my notebook and pens, my queen pea, and my apartment keys, this is just very bulky and overkill in terms of capacity. And honestly, for the on-person carry, that's basically it. If I'm headed out, wallet and knife in front right pocket, phone in the front left pocket, watch on my wrist, notebook, pens, flashlight, and keys into the sling, cap on my head, and I'm off to the races. Now, I don't know if the stuff that always stays in my car even counts as EDC, but it's really just three additional things. Well, I mean, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, it's either three or 116 additional things, depending on how you count. <laughs> But it's this full-size roll-up chess set that I use with some buddies, especially lately when we just kind of hang out in coffee shop parking lots. The second thing is an emergency bag that includes a first aid kit, fire starting gear, some cordage, and some water filtration and purification stuff. And finally, my Leatherman Charge Plus TTI. The Charge TTI used to be my EDC knife as well, but it's significantly heavier and bulkier than my bailout. Check it out, about 80 grams for the bailout and more than three times the weight at 250 grams for the Leatherman Titanium Charge. I made a video reviewing and sharing how I typically use the tools on the Leatherman, and so if you're interested, I'll link it right up here. But now, I just leave in my car since the bailout handles most of the tasks with much less of the weight and pocket bulk. Still, I definitely recommend every human being own a multi-tool. And if you're fortunate enough to have a car to have a reliable multi-tool in the glove box, it can really save the day. If you're curious about what's in my emergency bag, feel free to let me know if you'd like a breakdown video on that. Alrighty, let's talk subscriber giveaway. My two most recent Kickstarter projects, the Spec DNT, a naturally antimicrobial copper keyring attachment to help navigate frequently touched surfaces, and Queen P, a gorgeous anodized aluminum chest pawn promotion queen that doubles as a secret container. Both the Spec DNT and Queen P are great for fidgeting too, which, if I'm gonna be completely honest, is what I use them for the most. <laughs> I've linked them both in the description below if you want to kind of get more details about either of them. But basically, the winner of the subscriber giveaway will receive one of each. And when it comes to the Queen P, the winner will decide after winning if they'd like to go with the Sheen or Stealth colorway. I'm going to pay for shipping anywhere on planet Earth, but if you live outside of Canada, your government may impose import taxes, which will be your responsibility to pay if you win. So, how do you enter? Super simple. As with all the giveaways I've done on this channel so far, there are just three requirements. As a subscriber giveaway, the first is of course that you are a subscriber to this channel. The second requirement to enter is that you comment below a specific item in your EDC that you absolutely love, including the brand and model, because I want to get some inspiration from you guys since I love all things EDC. And finally, the last requirement is that you have Instagram. You don't have to follow me, you just have to have an Instagram account since it's impossible to private message people on YouTube, and I have to somehow coordinate shipping with you if you're the winner privately. You just have to hit all three of these requirements by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, August 31st. The winner will be chosen the same way as all previous subscriber giveaways I've done. All qualifying entrants will be added to a spreadsheet in the order they commented below, and I'll use random.org and take a screenshot video so it's all transparent to randomly pick the winner, which will be announced the day after the contest closes, at some point on Wednesday, September 1st, 2021. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, I think you'll really like this one right over here, and if you're catching some value, please hit that like button and consider subscribing, because honestly, that one little tap or click really helps me out a ton. Links for everything I talked about in this video are in the description below, so be sure to check them out if you're interested in researching them for yourself. As usual, thanks so much for kicking it with me, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.